In the book, In Search of Deeper Learning, authors Hal Mehta and Sarah Fine point out, and I quote, in 1970, the top three skills employers asked for were reading, writing, and arithmetic. In 2015, they were complex problem solving, critical thinking, and creativity. Thus, the education that would have sufficed in 1970 will not prepare students for the workforce today. However, not much has changed in the standard high school curriculum since 1970, end quote. This reality requires schools to explore new ways to not only teach content, but to also teach skill building such that students are comfortable overcoming undefined challenges. For example, a company may ask an employee to build a program to increase sales or reach a potential demographic, a demographic of potential clients. The employee isn't handed an action plan in these situations that will get the job done. The employee has been asked to create the solution. As such, assessments in schools can no longer be regurgitations of facts. Rather, they must encourage students to use the content as merely a conduit to learn and hone critical thinking and problem solving skills. This is why the science department shifted to include more project-based learning nearly four years ago. Our goal was to let students pursue something they were genuinely curious about, while simultaneously weaving in the necessary skill building into all of our science courses. Now, students really engage with the scientific method of observing, questioning, even challenging what they've been told, and then hypothesizing, designing an experiment or a solution, testing it, analyzing their data, and reasoning through all of that information to come to sound, valid conclusions. With this approach, students are building transferable skills that will serve them well in any discipline. Exemplifying how the upper school science program impacts students, let me share two student reflections. The first, in an email from a recent graduate, Thank you for advising me on my project with the Department of Transportation of Stanford. It helped me jumpstart my career. I now work for the city of Stanford, and I am learning so much about the field I want to pursue in college and professionally. And the second one from a current student. At first, I was really overwhelmed. But after I thought about how to test my hypothesis, I realized it wasn't that hard. I would like to solve problems with this mindset in the future so that I can feel more confident and independent. As you can see, we help students develop the ability to navigate very complex challenges. This work both now and going forward will truly prepare students for a rapidly changing world. With that, let me introduce to you one such student. Through King's commitment to research-based learning opportunities, Wafa Nomani has, Wafa Nomani's confidence and ability to tackle difficult challenges has improved tremendously. She is now tackling one of the most aggressive cancers at one of the most prestigious institutions for medical research in the nation, Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center in New York City. With that, please welcome Wafa Nomani. Hi everyone, and thank you Dr. Shulman for inviting me to share my experience in science research at King. In the past three years, my science classes have allowed me to pursue research projects that have gotten me really excited about my learning. I'm not just sitting in a lecture for every class, instead I'm being challenged and encouraged by my teachers to actively engage in my own learning through projects. First, I learned a lot doing pre-planned lab activities. I enjoy these because instead of just accepting what I heard in a lecture, I can see it happen with my own eyes. This helps the information stick better as well. These activities have also taught me skills that I later apply to the science fair. In my ninth grade science fair, I merely dipped my toe in research, and although my project wasn't revolutionary, it helped me gain a much better understanding of the scientific method. Then in 10th grade, 
I felt more confident and I proposed a more ambitious science fair project. My motive was to really to try to make a difference in this world and figure out something that hasn't been discovered before. With my interest in health and medicine, I wondered if my grandparents' medications for diabetes and cholesterol levels chemically interacted. Inspired, I sent a proposal to Dr. Shulman to test the synergistic effects of metformin and simvastatin on the TGF beta signaling pathway in C. elegans. I initially thought that my proposal would not get approved because of time or lack of resources, or maybe because it wasn't testable. But to my amazement, Dr. Shulman graciously approved my proposal on the conditions that we could secure the drugs from a pharmaceutical research company. We did, and I moved forward with designing my experimental plans. This was definitely the moment when I realized that anything is possible. I don't have to limit myself or my imagination. I can do anything. However, throughout this process, I encountered flaws in my experimental design. Sometimes unexpected things happened, and I needed to troubleshoot on the spot. This was definitely an important and valuable skill I learned throughout experimentation, and it helped me finish my project. When I presented at the King Science Fair, I won second place from the outside judges, and I was invited to present at the Columbia University Undergraduate Science Research Symposium, among other students from prestigious institutions such as Columbia, Emory, NYU, Rutgers, and Yale. Additionally, because of my science fair project, I recently secured an internship at Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center, where I'm currently trying to develop a nanoparticle drug delivery system for the treatment of pancreatic cancer. Going into my internship amongst graduate students and postdocs, 10 plus years my seniors, I definitely felt overwhelmed at first. But I had had enough preparation from my previous science fair research projects to be able to handle it. This has truly been an unforgettable experience for me. Through a high school science fair project, I stepped into the shoes of a researcher and into the real world. I have wanted to do this forever, and I thought I wouldn't be able to do it until I was much older. I am so thankful for King's research training and project-based learning, because I can do this now as a junior. Every day in the lab, I get a rush of adrenaline and excitement. Every day I discover something new. Thank you. Thank you so much, Wafa, and thank you, Dr. Shulman. I want to call all of our attention to Wafa's phrase that she just uttered, rush of adrenaline and excitement. One of the advantages of engaging students in real-life project-based learning experiences is that they get to experience the rush of doing real work, work that feels important because it is important. And when students, particularly teenagers, know that their work is important, that it has real-world consequences and connections, their work is more likely to inspire better learning. As both Watha and Dr. Shulman point out, it's moving from the abstract to the applied, from the abstract to the concrete task of meaning making that makes a learning experience like those we've just heard about so memorable and lasting. We know that students who are engaged in meaning making will create lasting memories, and as a result, they're gonna learn more. As research biologist Dr. Hope Yarin says, quote, five days in the field is worth more than a semester behind a desk, unquote. And this truth doesn't just apply to science. Indeed, when Dr. Shulman speaks about the scientific method, we should recognize in its rhythms so many parts of our curriculum, learning to ask insightful questions, creating a hypothesis, engaging in evidence gathering, evidence analysis, evidence testing, drawing conclusions, changing our minds, and yes, failing and starting again. So, tonight I'll focus on project-based learning in our upper school, drawing upon our program specifically in history and the visual arts. Some of you may recall from a previous State of School presentation that history faculty member Patrick O'Neill introduced a two-part course in our upper school that combined classroom work with field study. Field study is an approach to teaching that, in his case, engaged the students with the troubles of Northern Ireland, and the students traveled to Northern Ireland to experience what they'd studied in the classroom. 
field study. They interviewed politicians, re religious leaders, civilians who had actually participated in the troubles, which were no longer abstract, but very, very real for our young students. Those students speak about what they learned about the complex political, religious, and social dimensions of our humanity with much more passion and engagement than you might typically see in an adolescent. Moving forward, this field study approach, an approach we've also utilized in courses like archaeology, for example, will be particularly important as we seek to maximize our students' engagement in their own learning. The adolescent, we know, needs this type of engagement to learn best. Teenagers are working on a, developing a self, a core of self, individuating from the adults in their lives and seeking their own purpose and meaning. Teens always ask, why do I have to know this? If the adults in their lives don't give them compelling answers, we sometimes lose them. I say sometimes because we know many kids at King can do school. Teaching that focuses on those research skills of good questioning, testing hypotheses, learning to analyze evidence to really understand deep truths or solve challenging human problems makes students step out of the comfort of doing school and instead step, in the case I just described, into the world of doing history or doing art. Ran Lapola, the chair of our visual arts and design department, worked this year with the visual arts faculty across the lower, middle, and upper schools to develop a model of engaged learning called the OPEN curriculum. OPEN is shorthand for original, personal, expressive, and novel. And I'll give you a sense now of how the OPEN program is creating opportunities specifically for upper school students. Ms. Lapola is working with our students to build an open mentor program that will connect students with experts in the field in which they're interested in the arts. This teaching approach acknowledges that learning today must connect our students to community partnerships and to real practitioners beyond the classroom who can inspire our students with possibilities for future study. Upper school students who are interested in architecture, for example, can debate with a mentor, an architect, about how architecture can create healthy and inspiring work environments. These are just a few of so many examples of how our curriculum already offers applied learning opportunities for our students. Our strategic plan now calls us to empower our students even more intentionally and consistently to be relentlessly and deeply curious about their world. I am so excited for the future of engaged research and inquiry-oriented work at King. This is the best place to be a student right now as we engage in the present and keep our eyes firmly on the horizon. Thank you very much.